What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. This right here is going to be another Grey Zone Warfare video. Listen, those of you that have found my channel through Grey Zone Warfare, I think it's time that I talk on a few things about the game. What you're about to hear is a combination of opinion from the Caliber Collective. It is an organization that we have started. Feel free to join that now if you're interested in tactical FPS games like Grey Zone Warfare, Tarkov, etc. We recently got back into Grey Zone to update it, wipe our characters, test it out, and kind of see where the game stood. And what I present in this video, I hope to some capacity reaches the developers because the opinions I'm about to share are going to be more than just my own. It's going to be about 40 to 50 different people that have come up with the best changes, best ideas that we can see in the game going forward. And they're going to be in no particular order except the first two, I think, are most important. You know, I want to hear what some of you guys think in the comments. I would like to hear some type of feedback. Also, you can join the Discord and we can talk about it. But I think the developers, especially from an indie company like this, they kind of need the community to give them feedback. And I know they have their Discord and all this stuff, you know, but... That's kind of streamlined from the development standpoint of people don't feel like they can really talk. People converse with each other differently than they do developers and so on. I'm sure you understand that. So I wanted to give some feedback to them. I hope you guys see this. I know you've seen some of my other videos. And when I do read these off, I hope you understand it's not just my opinion. And I've taken the time, or I say we have taken the time, to write down and go in detail the most important things in the game that we believe needs to be fixed and or added. And disclaimer, how I say these and with my tone and everything, how it can be, just please understand I'm passionate about the game. I'm passionate about this genre and I'm, I'm going to be truthful. So again, these are not just my opinions. They are our opinions, but let's hop into it. First and foremost, it turned me off a lot when I heard Rick talk about on this recent stream the performance being quote unquote something we have not forgotten. Madfinger Games, this needs to be the main character in the story. This should be the absolute primary number one issue about the game. It is ridiculous that it is a back burner topic. When I heard that we have not forgotten about it, I am pretty much writing off this first update as a loss. It is going to be a fucking bomb. I do not believe they are going to succeed with this update if they do not squash performance issues now. Can I be wrong? Absolutely. I'm stupid. But with the full range of specs from the people that I have played this game with, high-end, low-end PCs, to all be having some sort of issue, and then for developers to say, we haven't forgotten about it, worries me quite a bit. I think it should be the only thing, quite frankly, if I was running the show, it would be the only thing we're working on. We're not adding a single face mask until we get this shit better. But I know they probably have, you know, other powers to, at hand, and they, they have to meet certain deadlines, so they're doing it. But Night Ops... All this extra gadget bullshit stuff. Cool. It's all awesome, man. It looks good. Okay, kudos. It looks amazing. But man, I cannot wait with my $7,000 rig. I cannot wait to scope in with a laser in Tiger Bay and get 15 frames. I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, that should be the absolute number one, number zero, like the, the absolute main character of development with this game right now. No question. And that, that was pretty much unanimous with every single person I've talked to throughout the, the weeks and months. Second, I think this game with involving faction play is very unique. I have said with many others that Grey Zone is probably has the biggest potential in the genre right now. It's not even close. They have, so, they have such a blank canvas that they can do so many good things with the game. So with the faction play being in place, there's a new title coming out and I know y'all are buddy buddy with them. Deep Worlds, Beautiful Light. They have a PID system and it's three man teams. They have Kim Lights. There are essentially 16 man teams on Grey Zone Warfare. And we're about to start doing night cycles. And there's no PID system. So, number two, and this is very important, there should be no friendly fire at all. You should not be able to kill teammates with grenades, gunshots, anything. You should not be able to harm your team. If we do not have a distinct way of recognizing each other, then we don't need to be able to kill each other, especially in a large scale title like that. It's ridiculous. Uh, we, we, you know, the collective, we, we try to do different campaigns and we try to, you know, as the wipe evolved, we try to go into different tier areas. I know performance held, held us back a lot. We would try to raid fobs, d different stuff like that. We're so worried about killing each other that we can't even enjoy the fucking game. So it, it, the faction play, great idea, but we need to be able to do it. Okay. We have top 
top tier communication. We were very good at that. We work with each other and we tried to get better at it, but it is just impossible with 10, 12, 16 guys. It's not, it's not viable at all. So turn off friendly fire so we can play the game as it's designed. Now I'm going to go down the list a little bit faster. So PID system was what I already spoke about. Have some sort of PID system. The LZ camping isn't really LZ camping. It's more times than not. It's people that are waiting on their chopper to arrive because they have called it in and they're waiting for five, seven, nine minutes, whatever the case. I know y'all are trying to fix that, but they're sitting there waiting for their chopper and another faction's little bird comes into land and they kill them. I would clean slate all that bullshit and I would start from fresh with these new LZs you guys are adding and hear me out. Just try to follow me here because I'm probably going to twist it up a little bit because I'm a little slow. So follow me here. Faction one is at LZ one. They're trying to exfil. You take off from your fob and you select a POI. You do not select an LZ, you select a POI. The game will register that faction one is trying to leave by using LZ one. Therefore, your game and your little bird pilot will divert to LZ three. It is the clearest. No one's there trying to exfil. It's gonna be fairly safe. You're gonna land and at least have a chance. That is what I would do. I know y'all are trying to shorten the heli flights. And again, we're going to get into that in a minute. Why the pros and cons with that. But the exfil camping can be avoided if somehow we can code it to where the server and, and the helicopter does not go to an area where a team is trying to exfil. It will divert somewhere around the POI that it's at and land at one that's a little bit safer. That's probably harder than... I make it sound. I understand that. Again, I don't do this, but that's just an idea because the exfil camping, I don't think making more LZs is going to do much of a difference. People are going to still try to use the primary ones, but if the little bird pilots could divert to infill at a place where people are not exfilling, you're going to have less, uh, less, less fights, unfair fights at the LZs. Now, since we are going to be shortening these flights that you guys talked about, and I know some of these things I speak on might be coming. I know y'all have stuff hidden that you don't want to tell people. I got it. So if I'm obviously saying that, just move on. I got it. I'm ignorant here. But since we're going to be shortening these flights, which is a win, I believe that's good. We need to still have some sort of finality of death and meaningful death. Dying in the PvP, PvE, regardless, I think you should have a cooldown on the person that died from getting to call in a helicopter for at least five minutes. They don't get to just keep respawning because with the shorter flights, if people just die and get to get back to their body faster, it's going to make PVP a fucking joke. You won't have time to wipe a squad and get to loot anything because they're already back on their bodies, spread out, trying to kill you from looting their bodies, and it's just gonna be freaking chaos. Make death matter if you're going to shorten the flights. So I'm gonna chalk that up right now as an L because I think the short flights, in theory, the shorter flights make sense. But when you start adding the dynamic play of the game, people dying and getting to get to their body even faster than they were before takes away from it, man. It, 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 it takes away from the every move matters. No, it doesn't. I need to feel that. I need to feel when I die. I need to be worried that I might not get back because it's going to take me a long time. OK, that needs to be worked out. Maybe make the, the flights faster, you know, especially your first infill. But if you die, man, I think you should sit there for five or 10 minutes, like or something, something where you, you feel it. And it, it makes the PVP and surviving scarier. It actually makes every move matter. That slogan is with this game. Again, I love it. I love the idea. But that slogan right now, it, does, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters, every FPS matters would be a good one. You know, like the, it, there is no there's nothing scary except like one shotting AI and low frames. Like there's nothing scary about it. So like every move does not matter. It, it's it's a joke. But again, I know this is not the final vision, so I don't want to roast and, and keep talking shit. I, I, I get it. I'm nobody. You know, I'm just I'm just passionate. With the every move matter type thing, I want to get into the color of the game. Green zone warfare. It's not gray zone warfare. It is very green. I firmly believe, and I, I play with people that are my age, younger, older. We all have different strengths of eyesight, I guess. But it's not really competitive in the PvP sense in the jungle. Now, when you get into these POIs, yes, the better team, better players are going to win. But in the jungle, in the green, the green zone warfare, it's it's who sees who first, I guess. And it's who's ever sitting in a bush and, and all that. And I know like, hey, it's got to be stealthy, a little bit realistic, but there, there's no silhouette of characters. There's no like, you know, and I get it. You're trying to be tactical and stuff like that. But if you, you know, Tarkov's the same way. 
it's a tactical FPS shooter, hardcore, relatively, right? So, but I can still see people. I can still see enemies fairly well in, in woods and stuff like that. So something's off with that, but I'm, I'm sure that'll get better over time. Building a weapon is an issue. It takes a long time. There's no saved presets, but again, that's probably something y'all have already talked about in-house, so I'm not even going to go into that too much detail. I know y'all are trying to do a lot of QOL stuff, and I respect that, so we, we won't do that. A little more depth with the faction play, we think you should add some form of FOB community goals, kind of like Helldivers and stuff like that. The whole faction community stuff could be built, you know, and and maybe like LRI might not be the most popular, but maybe they get a little, little bit cheaper equipment because they're, they're not able to build up their FOBs defenses. You know, this is worldwide. This is all faction stats as fast as like Crimson or Mithras or something like that, like, and, all, and offset that economy, but let us get items to to defend our defend our fob and the more defense we have the more stuff is going to be worth if you raid it and i'm, I'm sure y'all are probably working on that some type of bank or money system that people can loot when they raid you know make it worth it again i, I understand it's early guys i i understand and the, all these things that i'm speaking that weren't really the first few are are probably coming in some capacity but i'm just going through what a list of of what the, the collective gave me a search function in the traders menu uh qol that would be nice Dynamic POIs and AI, y'all promised that, um, and you said it would come with early access, but you know we're, we're approaching what five six months, and uh, it, it, they don't really do that, uh, so you can't really time that. It watch for patrols, things like that. So I understand, and I and I know the whole thousand AI on the map was a dream. I know y'all told us early like there was gonna be a thousand AI, and I don't know if y'all met that number, but I you know I think you should maybe reduce it a little bit, or you know live up to, to the dynamic AI, like you said you would. I loved your uh, LPVO and your variable zooming optics. I, I, I love that. Uh, but now Tarkov is one up, y'all. It looks very smooth, butter smooth when, when zooming these optics. So I think you'll try to step up and, and make, that, make that happen because that's a huge win. That, that's a huge part of the game in, in both of these games. Really, any game like this, it's going to be looking down your scope, ADSing, right? So those minuscule things matter. Y'all y'all should consider that, it's reworking those to where it's smoother. A big one that's been a stink for me from the beginning, and I voiced it, was PvP and PvE progression. A fucking joke that they blend. I don't get it. Uh, look, I, maybe y'all were worried about servers and population, and I, I don't know the reason, but sooner rather than later, that shouldn't be a thing. And I know why people do it. We did it. Well, I say we, not I. Some of the CC did it, trying to go get keys and whatnot a little bit easier, and that's going to bring me to one of my last points. But before I hop on that, yeah, the PvE, PvP progression sharing is silly. Cut that shit. It, it, it doesn't. Again, we want to make every move matter, guys. Like, yeah, that's y'all's fucking, lo uh, that's our, your slogan. Every move matter. If I can, you know what I'm saying? We're, 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 we're crutching it and being able to go do what this other stuff on PvE to get the keys or get a mission done that we need. Every move doesn't really matter, bro. Like, I change the slogan um and lastly key spawns key spawns are going to be huge i know y'all are talking about buffing those up so i won't spend too much time on it but what i will add is this last one the starter area it's pretty clear that y'all kind of made that especially during the creator play test and then the launch of early access it's it's streamlined with the coordinates and all that stuff to get you used to the game so people doing that again um it's gonna suck it'll be boring maybe let the doors stay open longer when someone does unlock them um so people that have played the game played the wipes they can get out of there faster so just another thought everybody else watching this video hey if you liked it if you wanted to add anything in the comments please do and again make sure you join the collective we have some of the best time on gray zone you know we, we set up a lot of different events and we're, we're pretty excited to play this wipe i hope it all pans out but i i'm already chalking it up as a loss and i'm usually a, a pretty positive guy but i i don't my final point and i said it earlier i i you know every single one of these streams announcements community mail and whatnot i don't see how we talk about anything except how they're battling optimizing the game how are we optimizing it who have we hired what are the systems that we found with the scala engine or anything any little details update us on that because again Guys, Rick, Mara, anybody, I'm not just speaking for myself here. I am speaking for a large group of people. It is the number one main character. It is the issue. I could play your game for thousands of hours. 
if I could play it, okay? And I could find more stuff and, and try to add more input and help out when I, I could, I could get a group of people to really dive into your game thoroughly. But we tried to play it recently. We, we, a lot of us wiped our character and we went through the starting area and we went into a few tier two areas and that was it. It's like, I don't know what it is, but it, it, it ain't it. Okay. And if people can come in here and say, oh man, you need to adjust your settings. You need to do this. Boys, I, I have, I have the resources and the people available. We, we, we have tried every angle and some people get okay performance. Some people get but most people get dog shit performance. And with a game like this, it has to perform well. It's got to be smooth. It's on UE5. Like it's, it has to be that way. You, you can't have a PvEVP or whatever shooter, but the moment you're getting into these combat, like into these interactions, you can't ADS and your shit go to 30 frames and you're trying to shoot somebody sprinting behind a building. It can't happen. It, it can't, you know, and even that now, like the, the AI and doing what it does, add that to it. it it's... None of your moves matter. Your specs matter. Every spec matters should be the slogan. Okay. Like I'm sorry. And I, I, I'm not going to give up on the game, but my last thing with, with the, the update, most people, this is their last chance. I will always probably come back and check out the game. 10, 12, 15, 15 wipes. I don't know. I'm always going to come back, but the average person is going to try it one more time. I have buddies that played the game with very good rigs and their game kept crashing with GPU dumps and all this bullshit. And trust me, we worked on it. We tried everything we could. And they can't play it. But they'll get 180 frames on Tarkov on a, on a Unity engine. And they, but they just cannot play it. Those guys might give it one more chance. But if they come back and it's a joke, they're not coming back for a third time. I, if it was me, since the performance isn't in the, in the forefront, the main character... The main issue, clearly, with the devs, I wish y'all would push this update to next year. You're, I think you're going to lose a lot of players if you rush it out and it's still performing badly, okay? But hey, man, I just make YouTube videos here and there. And if y'all watch my stuff, I'm optimistic. I like to have a good time. I love playing games with, with the boys. I love, I love doing all this stuff. I love the community aspect of it. I love socializing and, and playing these games. I'm not a pessimistic person, but... I will not lie. Everything here, I've told the truth. And from the people that I've spoke with over the last few weeks about this game, the people I've played this game with, hours, the best the game ever was, was during the, the play test. It has gotten progressively worse. Hey, make me eat my words. Make me eat my words. I wish all the best and I hope, I hope everything turns out. I'm just, you know, again, bringing you opinions and criticism from the community, Caliber Collective. Make sure you all join up. And again, let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.